Hi everyone, my name is Sam and on behalf of Romans Bookstore, I'd like to thank you all for joining us for tonight's event with Van Huang discussing Girl Giant and the Jade War, sequel to Girl Giant and the Monkey King with Katie Zhao. We'll be taking audience questions toward the end of the event, so please send us your questions by using the ask a question button at the bottom of the screen. And you can also vote for any questions you like and they'll make their way to the top. And we'll try to answer as many questions as time will allow. Also, please consider purchasing tonight's featured book from Romans. And to purchase a copy, please click the green purchase button right below the viewer screen. It'll redirect you to the website where you can complete the checkout process. And you can do that at any time throughout the event. It's good to keep in mind that shopping early for the holidays is encouraged, especially right now. There's lots of delays. So um, also support your in local independent bookstore. And we are appreciative of your support, especially in these times. And then without further ado, let me introduce our guest for today. Van Huang earned her bachelor's degree in English at the University of New Mexico and her master's in library information science at San Jose State University. Girl Giant and the Monkey King was her debut novel. She was born in Vietnam, grew up in Orange County, California, and now resides in Los Angeles with her husband, kid, and two dogs. Katie Zhao is a 2017 graduate of the University of Michigan with a BA in English and Political Science and a 2018 Master's of Accounting at the same university. That is impressive combination. Um, <laughs> accounting is like the last thing that I would be able to do. Um, same. <laughs> <laughs> She's the author of the Dragon Warrior series, How We Fall Apart, Last Gamer Standing, and has forthcoming The Lies We Tell and the forthcoming Winnie Zhang series. She is represented by Penny Moore of Evitas Creative Management, and she's a passionate advocate for representation in literature and media. Um, I don't know if The Lies We Tell is out or not. I thought that was out already, but in case that is not accurate, just wanted to let let you know it comes uh, out next year <laughs> oh okay i was thinking yeah about yeah yeah for reason. well anyway without further ado thank you so much van and katie for joining us tonight at romans and for everyone at home and please sit back relax and enjoy your presentation yeah. hello <laughs> <laughs> this is so exciting yes. ah! <laughs> <Very> exciting. <laughs> yeah i'm so happy to be here with you today um so do you want to just like give a quick pitch of girl oh. giant and the jade war to get us started uh, sure, I was. I, I don't know why I was like not prepared to do this. <laughs> no, 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 no worries. Sorry, I, I hate the pitch question, honestly. <laughs> so I'm sorry for asking. No, 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 it's okay. I was like, wait, wait, you can do that. Okay. Um, well, here is the book, and the cover is illustrated by Ka Illustration, and they're also Vietnamese. So pretty. So they like totally just understood what the story was about, and like they're just such, such amazing artists. So, and they also have their own book. So if you check, if you want to check them out. Um, they, the duo is called Ka Illustration, but their names are Nguyen Quang and Kim Lian. So yeah, check them out. But anyway, about the book, it is the sequel to Girl Giant and the Monkey King. And if we have all read it, we know that Girl Giant and the Monkey King ends up in a cliffhanger. So this is like my apology to the world <laughs> <laughs> for that cliffhanger. And you get to find out whether the Monkey King is like a good or a bad character and like how that whole adventure plays out. So yeah. Yay, that was such a good pitch. Wait, Thank yeah, you. I just wanted to like shout out the illustrators because like mm -hmm. I was in awe of all the illustrations in yeah. this book. They're just like they're just they're like amazing. They're just so well done. I love them. Yeah. Ah, they're so pretty. And I bet kids love them too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, and like yeah. like fun fact, but there's like a scene in the book that um, I actually added in there because of the cover. So they finished the cover <gasps> before like the book was finished. And then I loved it so much that I like went back in and like changed a certain scene in there. Oh so. my God, I love yeah. that. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah, like you sing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I really like how you started to talk a little bit, a little bit about whether the Monkey King is like a good figure or an evil figure because I wanted to start our conversation with a quote and then go into like our questions. Yeah. Um, this quote comes from the book and I, it really struck me. So the quote is, the Monkey King will always look out for himself and just as there is a side of him that is good, there is a side of him that will always be bad. Um, and this quote like really struck me as like a very apt interpretation of the Monkey King because like from my knowledge of like Chinese mythology, he's always been like a trickster figure, but like kind of written in a way that makes you root for him, even though you know he's doing like bad things and like you shouldn't root for him. Um, 
so yeah, I just wanted to know, like, out of curiosity, how did you set about creating this nuanced interpretation of the Monkey King? Yeah, okay, so, like, I thought a lot about this, and there's, like, a million things that, like, go through my mind on how to answer it, but, like, most of all, it's because, like, there was a point in my childhood, like, around probably 11, 12 years old, when I was, like, always getting in trouble, <laughs> like, I was, like, a bad kid, but, like, I, I, th- I considered myself to be a pretty good kid, but, like, I don't know, I was always getting in trouble for, like, being too silly or like being too loud or like getting too dark in the sun, you know, that sort of thing. And like, I think that really shaped like me growing up as like, oh, I have to be a good kid all the time. And every time I do something bad, I would feel like I'm not a good kid. I'm a bad kid, you know, but then it like, I had to come to like a point in my life where I was like, no, like I'm a good person who sometimes does bad things, you know, (laughs) that doesn't mean I'm a bad person. (laughs) So I wonder if that was like me projecting like myself into the monkey king. Um, But also, like, in mythology, like, I took a lot of liberties with his mythology, but there's, like, um, like, the the real history of him is, like, he's a bad, like, he's a bad egg up until he, like, gets punished and put, gets put under the mountain for, like, 500 years or something. And then he gets, like, um, rescued and given a second chance um, with, like, the monk. I think his name is, like, Dipkara. I forgot, like, his his real name, but the monk, which the monkey Mm -hmm. king calls the master, and they go when their like mission is to bring um, some ancient like Buddhist text to yeah. the West. Yeah, and that's why it's called Journey to the West. Mm-hmm. Um, and then during that part, that's when the Monkey King is like, that's like the cutoff of when he's like, now he's good. Like he's gonna try to be a good character because he like <laughs> loves the master and he like wants the master's approval. But like throughout the whole journey, there's like so many temptations for him to be bad. And he's, he just like always fails. Like every like episode <laughs> of them like going after a demon, there's like a moment where he's like, don't be bad, don't be bad. And then he like does the thing that he's not supposed to do. And then he's just like shame, like shameful and like, you know, just guilty. But then he always like, he always like tries to prove himself again, you know? And like, I think that's what makes you root for him because like, he's not perfect. And like, he tried, but like, he's still gonna try, you know? And like, no matter like how many times he's kind of like, I don't know, make mistakes or screws up, I guess he'll always like keep going back and like keep trying, so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think what I've always liked about the Monkey King is that, like, quality of him. Because, like, I think he does, like, in the beginning, he starts off, like, not even trying to be good, really. Like, yeah. he was just, like, causing chaos in heaven. Yeah. He was like, I'm just going to bring everything down. And yeah. the gods are like, no, we're not going to have that. <laughs> and then, like, <laughs> but, like, throughout, like, the stories, you can kind of see, like, oh, like, now he's got, like, this master who he's, like, trying to be good for. And, like, now that he has this, like, purpose to like try mm-hmm. to be good like even though he kind of falls off the road sometimes like in general yeah like he's doing his best yeah and that's exactly. what makes him so endearing because he's yeah. just like yeah <laughs> you just want to yeah. root for him <laughs> I know yeah because like he's trying and then like there have been there are times where like just because like his of his history so this is just like focusing on journey to the west like just because of his history as like a bad character like they'll they won't even like judge him based on like that moment of what he did they'll just be like well you were bad all this time so then this must be like a very bad thing that you did even though it was just like oh he said he said he said like hi to a demon he wasn't supposed to say hi to yeah you know yeah yeah (laughs) yeah so like did you watch like the cartoon series as you were kind of researching what kind of research did you do so I, when I was a kid, we used to watch like the like really old live action version oh. where he was like played by like a really skinny dude. <laughs> I don't remember like which version yeah. exactly, but it was like the one that's like 150 episodes or something like that. So that was like what I feel like that like made me like as a person like watching those those uh, shows. But then there's like a recent like trilogy movie um, that came out like within the past five years. Um, that I really enjoy, but they they also take a lot of liberties. And then the Monkey King isn't like as silly as like I always you know remember him in my mind. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like as far as like actual research, like I read um, the like English translation of Journey to the West, which was really interesting. Mm. But then there were like there were some frustrating parts where it would be like these demons are impossible to defeat. Like they're so powerful, like so invisible. It's impossible to defeat them. And then the next. <laughs> The next sentence would be like, and then the monkey king defeated them. And it's like, but how? Like, That's so funny. Yeah. Like, I need to know the details. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. But but like I really enjoyed reading it like as a classic text. 
Yeah. That's so funny because I can just imagine like like an editor at like a, a major Western <laughs> publisher would be like, excuse you, yeah, you need like, to write out never... like a full chapter of like <laughs> detailing exactly how he defeated them. Yeah. Like, show, don't tell. I know. Like this would never yeah. fly like in today's yeah, storytelling right? standards. <laughs> right? No, yeah. I actually think that's like something that I also really like about Journey to the West. Like mm-hmm. the the stories themselves feel pretty episodic mm-hmm. and like it's I think that's something that we don't necessarily get with like Western yeah. storytelling because mm-hmm. in Western storytelling, like it's all about, you know, fast pacing, I feel like, especially for middle grade and young adult, yeah. because um you want to grab the kids' attention. Yeah. Um and like I definitely see like why. Mm-hmm. But I think like with Eastern stories that I at least the ones I've read, like they t- generally like take their time. Yeah. Um and there's like always like 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 a side like really, quest. Yeah, side quest. Yeah. Um, I feel like a lot of them are like kind of like religiously themed or like there's mm-hmm. always something about like a higher power or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Like it kind of like, have you read um, Heroes of Condor? It's like a wuxia. Oh um, no, but I, I think I, I think I like plan to watch a TV series or something. Mm-hmm. Like I just like haven't gone around to it. Yeah, yeah. But the books are kind of the same, like like it'll be like this overarching yeah. story but then suddenly there's like a side quest and then yeah. there's like a whole character's backstory and yeah. it's like it really has nothing to do with like the whole <laughs> part of the story but at the same time like it's really engaging you know yeah, yeah. the story's kind of meander that's the word like yeah, the plot exactly. just kind of like does whatever <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's yeah, like you're, you're it. just here because you like being here you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. um let's see what about one of my other questions Oh, okay. So I wanted to ask you about Tom because mm-hmm. Tom is like just like such a fun, strong protagonist and she has such a good heart. So I like throughout, you know, book one and book two just felt like she really feels like the best of middle grade. So how did you set about coming up with her character? Uh, thank you. Like, I think um, when I was creating her character, I was just like thinking about all the traumatic things I went through when I was like in middle school. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think like I think I was only like drawn to that because like I think those are the like, the people who are the most interesting who like you know like sound so bad but like people who have suffered like make the most yeah. interesting characters and um, like but at the time like I just remember my middle school years being like really tough because like I felt like you know I was so different and like I didn't fit in anywhere and like I didn't move so like I I did move to Georgia but that was like in high school but. For Tom, like in middle school, at least, I mean, sorry, like in middle school, I li- like grew up in a Vietnamese, like a pretty strong Vietnamese community, but yet I still always felt like very different from, you know, like even like my own like demographic and culture. And um, like, like writing this book, it was, it was hard because I had to like deal with all that trauma, but like stay like lighthearted because it was a middle grade book at the yeah. same time. But yeah, like, I think just making her like a very traumatized character like, brought her to life, I guess. <laughs> I I think there's a, a lot of merit to that thought that like, like the, not, I don't know how to say this in like a, a way that doesn't sound bad, but like the, the characters who go through a lot, like the ones <laughs> who are really going through it, they make for like the most interesting characters and like mm-hmm. it makes you want to root for them because they're typically yeah. like the underdogs. Like, yeah. I love a good underdog story. Like, give me a character who starts from nothing, has nothing, yeah. maybe has been bullied, has like, <laughs> you know, like identity crises, like every yeah. chapter or so. And then like, have them save the world or do something incredible. Like, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, everyone loves a good underdog story. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Like, no one wants to read like that privileged, you know, character that like has everything <laughs> handed to them. Because then it's right? like, it's too easy. You already like, you already have everything that yeah. you need. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make for an interesting story because then yeah. like, what, what are they going to try to get next? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. they have everything. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, I also and everyone... like, oh, go ahead. Oh, go no, ahead. no, you go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I was gonna say, oh, I also like that the tone is like lighthearted because uh, I don't know if it, it's like this for you, but for me, I, I will write experiences that like in my memory, like I kind of went through something similar when I was younger and I remember mm-hmm. it being kind of traumatizing or like, you know, just like not a great experience, but then like in writing it and adding humor, it's like a way of like 
just like coping or like healing. Yeah. Like I feel yeah. better having written, know. you know, something that is like kind of, you know, similar to this experience I had, but I made it, you know, more lighthearted. I like, you know, added a tone of hope. Mm-hmm. Um, it's almost like I'm kind of reaching back to my younger self and being like, hey, yeah. like this wasn't great, but you're going to be okay. Like you yeah, are exactly. okay. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's like you're replacing your memory or something of that, or like yeah. shining a different light on it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. That's that, that was a what great. What were you gonna to say, say before I interrupted? Oh, it's Sorry. okay. I think I was gonna say something like, "Oh, everyone assumes that like I based Tom off of like me, but I don't oh. think that I did because I'm not very like like her." <laughs> um, I, I think like the person I am most like in the book is Tom's mom. (laughs) Everyone's always like a little shocked when I say (laughs) that, but also like, yeah, I am like that mom. Like I'm like that Asian mom. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Wait, you have kids, right? I have one kid now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. One kid. Do you think like Tom was based off of like your kid (laughs) at all? I don't think so. Okay. But maybe so like like your your books are like your baby. So then in a in a way, like when you're creating like characters, I almost treat them as if like if this was my daughter, like this is what she would be like. You know, (laughs) this is what she would deal with growing up with a mother like me. (laughs) Yeah. That's such a funny way to look at it. Yeah. Uh, Even though at the time, like, I, I didn't have kids and I, like, didn't really think that I was going to have kids, you know? But, like, I think, like, it, like in writing the character, like, I kind of always have that mindset. Yeah, yeah. So I kind of have a question that might be a little bit, like, more difficult. But mm-hmm. um, basically, you know, a lot of people talk about second book syndrome. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, just like sequels are harder to write or maybe like not a sequel, but the sophomore novel is just like harder to write because you're on deadline, yeah. people have expectations, blah, blah, blah. So did you feel like you kind of experienced that? And if so, how did you like get through it? Oh, yeah. I like had really, really bad like imposter syndrome. And um, I don't know. It's like it's so hard to explain because it's like you like I obviously wrote a book like why. But then I suddenly felt yeah. like oh my god, like, I can't write books, like, people are gonna figure this out, you know, eventually, and, like, they're gonna read it and be, like, how did she, like, get a book published? It's, it's just terrible, you know, um, but, yeah, I totally had imposter syndrome. It was, like, impossible for me to write the second book. I, like, didn't even try for a long time, and I, what, like, got me over it was I wrote, I actually wrote, like, two whole, maybe even three whole other books that, like, I had no intention of ever publishing, <gasps> that I just wrote because like, and I had to keep telling myself like, this is just for you. Like, this is not for anyone else to look oh. at. Like, it's gonna be okay. <laughs> yeah, so, and that was like two years of like, just not being able to write. Wow. And then like, finally, I think like two months before the book was due, like my editor was like, hey, <laughs> you, you need to turn this in. <laughs> and that was like, okay, deadline panic was like what finally pushed me to like oh finish the book. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> wow so you yeah, have two two whole other manuscripts yeah. uh-huh and what like, are they <laughs> I'm like so completion curious. so like okay I, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about this because it's unannounced but oh. yeah like one actually oh, did okay. like we we sold it but like <gasps> but honestly when I was writing it I was like you're you're never gonna publish this like I don't even want to show it to, I didn't want to show it to anyone like it was like really just for me um but then like after a while, even my agent was like, hey, like, I need to see something, like, you need to turn something in. So I was like, okay, well, I worked on this book, like, I don't know if you'll like it, because, like, it's something I wrote, like, just for fun, you know? And, like, she loved it, so then we, like, pursued um, <clears throat> pursued it, and, yeah. But oh, that's so exciting! <laughs> yeah, it's unannounced, so, like, everyone okay, here, please, yeah, yeah, yeah. please don't say anything, yeah, I don't, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna get into so much trouble. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know how publishing secrets are. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's it's like it's really weird because like you would think that like everyone would just want to like broadcast their their joy you know but yeah it's really secretive I I feel like it's just like old publishing practices like yeah like things that have been done one way are always going to be done one way and I don't know because I honestly feel like like outside of like the people in publishing like nobody would care (laughs) Mm -hmm, I know right you know (laughs) Yeah, it's like my, my my family would be like, what does that even mean? Like <laughs> unannounced, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I totally feel you on like the whole imposter syndrome thing. Like even today, like I I have like books under my belt and like sometimes I'll get like a random message from somebody I knew from school or like totally outside of like publishing circles and they'll be like, Hey, I saw your book, or like, hey, my friend told me they read your book. And I'll be like, people outside of like 
the readers who follow me on Instagram read my books. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like more pressure, like, oh wait, I, I have to like actually write good things <laughs> all the time. Like, like what did I write? Did I write anything about them? Did I like put them into a character? Oh, oh no. <laughs> Oh man. So are yeah. you like gonna keep writing middle grade or are you like gonna branch out in young adult, adult, et cetera? Um, I really want to write like an adult um fantasy, but I think I'm like I'm not gonna like give up middle grade. So I have like a couple other oh, like yeah. secret projects I'm working on. Yeah, I don't think I'll ever Ooh. give up middle grade. I just like I just really love middle grade books. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I totally with you there, like even though like I've dabbled in like other age categories, like there's just something that's so like wholesome about middle grade. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like a breath of fresh air from like uh -huh. life. <laughs> yeah, and it's like so soothing. And then like, um, so I don't like normally reread books because like, you know, we're all busy, but like, I just like have like no time. But like, I always, whenever I want to reread a book because like I'm anxious and I just want to read a story I'm familiar with, like it's always like a middle grade book. Cause like, they're so soothing. Yeah. And, like, they're like, you know, they're just so silly and wholesome. And then there's like, there's something about that age group that's like, like they're, you know, most kids in that age, they're like still trying to figure out who they, they want to become, but then they, they're still like kids, you know, and they still have like, yeah. that, like, that, like, like just that quality of like imagination and like creativity that you just, you don't get like in a yeah. lot of other age groups. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think like for me, there's also like a nostalgia component to it because like, mm -hmm some of my best memories were just like being yeah. like 11, 12 years old, going to the library after school because yeah. I had no friends in no the life. <laughs> and I would just sit there and I would like go through like all these series in my public library. Yeah. And like those authors, like they had no idea, <laughs> but they like really shaped my childhood. And, yeah, like, exactly. want to do this. And yeah. there's just something like, I will never like, I will never be 12 again. I'll never mm -hmm. have that kind of free time again. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I like feel like middle writing middle grade is like trying to, to return myself to that time of yeah. my life. Yeah, exactly. It was like such a magical, but yet also like painful <laughs> period that will like always like stay yeah. cemented in our memories. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> magical, but painful. It's yeah. like painfully accurate. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yes, like I was also a library kid. Like I would go oh, to the library yeah. after after school, and like yeah. my parents always knew where to find me at the library. Oh, <laughs> you know what's funny is like my parents like they knew that like I loved going to the library, and so like they wouldn't take me there. Like they, it would be like a reward. <laughs> It'd oh. be like, if you finish all your homework, then you can go to the library and get more books. That's really like, funny. And now that I think about it, I'm like, on what? Like, what other parents yeah. would, would tell their kids that? <laughs> that is hilarious. I, just, I was always a, a strange child. <laughs> That's awesome, though. Oh, uh, yeah. My parents never had to worry about me. Like, I was always, like, the good kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You weren't uh, like me, like that period of my life that I was always getting in trouble oh yeah. no no I mean I, I feel like I don't know I feel like for me like like I would I would purposely seek out books that were like about troublemakers or mm -hmm. like had darker themes in them because I would like want to explore that in my imagination but I was just like a really shy kid who like never wanted to do anything wrong because I just didn't want to like bother people yeah <laughs> oh yeah oh <laughs> that's like like that's so sad because like I wish um like like especially like Katie specifically like I wish like an adult was there to tell you like it's okay like you don't you know like you're not bothering anyone <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah if I'd known that like I, I probably should have like made more trouble as a kid because I know that's like kid, the time to like, do it yeah <laughs> yeah no right it's like less serious like, yeah exactly it's like yeah. now we can't make trouble <laughs> I missed my opportunity I know <laughs> Now it's like I would get in real trouble. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so who are like some of your biggest influences, whether it was like in childhood or like just like when you set about writing Girl Giant? Yeah, so like um, I would say like Spirited Away. I really love that movie. <gasps> I know, oh, like we watch it like every few movie. months. Yeah, like I love it so much. Like once for like an assignment, I just, I'm not Japanese and I don't speak it. So I like watched the whole thing like in this Japanese dubbing with like no subtitles on and I was just like, like, oh, wow. it, is. <laughs> it was for like some um like nonverbal no not non I don't know it was like for some intercultural like assignment so like that was part of it, it was just like 
just like studying a different culture and that was like the best way to study a different culture was like okay I don't understand any part of this <laughs> wow. so I can just like observe the nonverbals. but yeah I, I really love that movie um like Pixar movies always remind me why I write middle grade because like like basically like all their books are like middle grade I mean not all their books are all their movies are like middle grade ish yeah. yeah so like I, I, I always love like watching that because it like reminds me of like the magic of that age range um but yeah like I really love like I don't know I can go on and on forever about like no! other books but like so like Neil yeah. Gaiman's like graveyard book like that you know that that's a great one um Jonathan Stroud's Lockwood and Company series. I'm rereading that whole series right now. Like, I just love it so much. Um, it's about like a group of ghost hunters. And then it really, it's kind of, it's more like a detective sort of book. And it's like about like found family. And then just like, um, I don't know. And it's so funny because like, I picked that book up like on a whim because I was just like in the library browsing and like saw the first book. And I don't even normally read horror. But like I just saw that and was like, oh my gosh, like this sounds really cool. And it's just like really good. And then his other books are also like very amazing. His new book it just came out. It's called Scar the 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 Outlaw, Scarlet and Brown. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like really good. I, I just oh, like okay. read through that book. Wow. It was, yeah, it was amazing. Okay. I've yeah. I've heard of him. I haven't mm -hmm. read his books, but I yeah. will put them on my never ending yeah. TBR now. <laughs> Sorry, I can, I can go on and on forever about his books. Um, he's, I think he's most famous for like his Bartimaeus trilogy, like. Oh, I have heard of that. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. been recommended that. Yeah, that one is about like this like kid with warlock, like summoning a demon, but it's like, ba it's like told from the demon's point of view. So it's like really witty and just like oh, full of sarcasm. Okay. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I really love the Lockwood and Company series. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I think you, I like rambled. Yeah. So what no, are we talking about? no, 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 that's so great. Like, I'm just yeah. mentally like taking notes. Like, what am I going to read next? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm totally with you on like the Studio Ghibli and like Pixar. Mm -hmm. Honestly, yeah, I can I can see the influence in your writing. Um, yeah. And those are also like two big influences for me. Like, yeah. I, I still like distinctly remember, like I was I was drafting my debut, The Dragon Warrior, like I knew mm -hmm. something wasn't clicking. And then I think the movie Coco came out around the time that I was like trying to draft and I was like, okay, I'm gonna take a break and go watch this movie. And I went, I saw the movie, I came back and I was like, I know exactly what I need to do to oh make gosh. this book work. Like, yeah, ah, I just, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I love that movie. It's like on repeat in my house right now because my kid also oh, really loves that movie. I love that <laughs> yeah, movie. It's so good. At this point, I can like recite it from heart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, I, whenever I go to like the movies and watch like Pixar movies or like, you know, like middle grade age mm -hmm. movies, I always just feel weird because it's like me or like maybe a friend I drag along <laughs> yeah. and we're like old people and then it's just like a bunch of children. I'm yeah, like, exactly. I feel a little weird, but <laughs> I'm still a kid at heart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I like... I have never felt weird about that because like I, I've always like grown up with like a child in my life. But yeah, now that I think about it, I'm like, I'm probably that weird adult that's like alone in the theater with no kid. <laughs> no, like people me. who go to like like you know, people who go to like the dog park but they don't have a dog. Like <laughs> that's like me, but like in children's movies. <laughs> I go to them without the children. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I am the child. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So what is the, like the best part of writing middle grade for you? I think it's like the ability to um, like be silly, like as silly as you want. And then like nothing yeah. is impossible, I guess. Like it's just, there's just like this whimsy about middle grade that's like, yeah, sure, we'll, we'll, we'll take it. You know, like the suspension of disbelief and like willingness that everyone is like able to do when they're reading or writing middle grade to just like set aside all their worries and just like accept this world as it is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. I often say that, like, like the, the reason why I haven't, like, really, like, uh, dipped my toe in, like, adult fiction, mm -hmm. at least, is that, like, it takes itself so seriously. I know. Like, yeah, I, I love reading it. Don't get me wrong. I love reading it. Uh, I have so many, like, favorite adult fantasy books, especially. Um, but then, like, me, I don't, I'm not, like, a very serious person, usually. Like, I don't take yeah. myself seriously. So I can sit down and write adult fiction, but then I'll need a, I'll, I will need a break because <laughs> I just like need to like laugh about something. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. you can always tell too, like when a book is taking itself too serious, you're like, okay, oh, yeah, like, yeah. things are not that dire. <laughs> um, yeah. And it's hard, it's hard to like find a book that's like 
like an adult book that's like has the same silly quality you know yeah. about like it's just having fun now that I think about it <laughs> we we should write that because yes. adults deserve fun too yeah like <laughs> we all but, deserve a laugh actually but also we were talking before this about Blackwater mm -hmm. Sister and like that book has like just the right like it doesn't take itself too seriously oh. but it's like I don't know it's just it's just really good like I'm still I still think about that book but yeah like there's like lots of funny moments in there um, and it's, it's basically about this girl who who's like in her 20s. So it's, it's like almost like new adult age, but she's like in her 20s. And then she starts getting um, haunted by her dead grandmother. And then she finds out that her grandmother, when she was alive, was like into all this like witchcraft and like shamanism. And then she like gets pulled into that world as well. But it's just hilarious. <laughs> that sounds so good. OK, I need to read that one, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like that's an adult book. Like I aspire to that okay. adult book. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. honestly, I, I want to do that. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> give me more like witty adult adults just like having fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I know. That. Yeah. yeah. The, the <laughs> nice thing about like, um, like writing for adults, I guess, like not that I've written like a million books, but like, okay, so like in middle grade, like when you're an adult person writing for middle grade, you kind of have to like, think back about like what you went through, you know, at that age, mm. and you have to like, decide what like kids nowadays are ready for like even though you're writing about a serious topic like you have to be you have to like put a light tone on it and you have to like really think about whether they yeah like they're ready or you know at the right like maturity level to um, read about this kind of stuff mm -hmm. and then with like adults you don't have to worry about that stuff because it's like yeah they're adults like they can handle yeah that thing. so in yeah, that sense it's liberating right. yeah yeah i think they're liberating in different ways like mm -hmm. yeah in middle exactly. grade you let out your inner child an adult you just do whatever you want yeah exactly you can like Basically. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the sky's the limit mm, yeah oh, okay so um i have some fun launch questions now since we have some time uh mm. are we how much time are we leaving for like q a did we decide like, that before oh i don't know like okay minutes? yeah okay if not we can just like keep talking i guess <laughs> um so yeah but i i do have some fun launch questions prepared yeah. so what is tom's opinion on durian <laughs> so i thought a, a lot about that and i think like <laughs> it was just so, so random I'm sorry <laughs> yeah it, no but it's a great question because it's like it's that okay if everyone if no one knows what durian is or if anyone doesn't know what it is it's like this fruit that's like really pungent mm. um I think that's like the only reason a lot of people don't like it is because it just yeah. has like this smell like it's indescribable but it's just like like if you yeah. eat it like your whole existence just becomes like durian <laughs> and then you like smell it for like days <laughs> you can't escape the durian yeah. <laughs> like it's just like you you are the durian <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but i think tom would like it but like be angry <laughs> about like <liking it. laughs> Like, like yes, I, I think it's like also that. my like I don't mind it, but then like while I'm eating it, I'm like, why am I eating this? Other than to like <laughs> please my mother or something. Just questioning like, all your life choices. <laughs> yeah, but like, but like I don't hate it, you know. So mm. I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, she like, yeah. would like it, but like be angry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I can totally see that. That's so yeah. funny. <laughs> what I about you? Do you oh like me! It? I yeah. was just gonna say I, I, I think I've only had it like twice in my life mm -hmm. and i i don't really remember having a strong opinion like yeah i don't think the smell really turned me off that much i was just like because i knew to expect it because yeah. i i'd like i knew like people thought durian smelled weird um so i don't really mind that but like i don't, I don't know if the taste was like particularly good because i don't really remember i just yeah. remember being like oh i guess this is durian that's fine yeah it's like <laughs> it's really also hard to describe yeah it's hard to describe the taste because it's like it's like bland but at the same time too yes sweet. <laughs> I know, yeah I know, like yeah. that doesn't make any sense but like that's i don't know that's how i think of durian it's like it's yeah i don't know and then the the texture is mushy so like my thing about it is that like people love to hate it because like they yes, always bring they it do. out yeah. yeah like they always bring it out as like a delicatessen at like you know family gatherings and yet and then they always complain about like yeah how bad it smells when it's like you brought it you know so i think that's <laughs> I think that's the thing about it. People just love to hate it. So yeah, they really do. Like yeah. I think because of that, 
I had more expectations that either I would love it or I would hate it. Mm -hmm. And then I just came out being like, it's fine. I don't really see the fuss. Yeah. That kind of smells weird. Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) I'm glad we got, had that discussion. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Next question. Um, What is Tom's favorite holiday? Ooh, I don't, I didn't put a lot of thought thought into that one. Mm -hmm. Huh? I think it would be new year's. Yeah. Because it's like a chance to, I don't know, like a chance to like correct all of her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Would New Year also be like your favorite holiday? <laughs> I guess so. I do like Christmas though. Oh yeah. yeah. Christmas. <laughs> Christmas is nice. Yeah. I used to be like um, like a Scrooge about it because I was like, I don't want presents. Like it's just a commercial holiday, and then I like got over myself and was like I love oh. <laughs> yeah I think yeah. for me like it's never like presents are nice I think when I was a kid I liked getting presents more but like I have my own money now so yeah. it's like I don't I don't really like need presents like yeah. if I want something I will buy it <laughs> yeah yeah um I think like it's more about like the gesture now mm-hmm. but yeah I think like now like I just I just like like the spirit of Christmas like yeah. I like seeing like pretty holiday lights mm-hmm. up and like trees yeah. and like getting together with family and food <laughs> yeah exactly and then I like um like I like finding a gift for someone that I know like they're gonna love you know even if they don't necessarily need it like that's always fun yeah yeah, yeah. but I also would agree with Tom like New Year is great <laughs> mm-hmm. like Lunar yeah. New Year is like actually uh, it's tough. I feel like Lunar New Year might be my favorite holiday. Yeah. Like Christmas would be a close second, but Lunar New Year is just like, I don't know. I just associate it with like really big, like family and like friend gatherings. Yeah. And like when I used to go to Chinese school, like our school would have like a, a big like performance kind of thing. And yeah. I actually really like <laughs> going yeah. to those. I thought they were I know. Fine. I yeah. really love the Dragon Dance. Oh yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah. I used to love watching them. Um, I know that like Chinese has like the ones that you kind of hold on sticks, right? They're kind of like a like a dragon yeah, puppet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like I think ours is like an actual like dance where they wear like the big dragon and they do like it's performed like real. It's performed by real oh. kung fu fighters, and I've always so like cool. loved watching it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I love I think, like yeah. Yeah, I just love like Lunar New Year crafts in general, like all the yeah. like all the things you can do with Lunar New Year. Yeah, and the food is great. I just feel mm-hmm. like the celebrations like are so big. Like mm-hmm. it almost feels like bigger than Christmas. Or yeah. maybe it's just because like I, I feel like culturally more connected to Lunar New Year, but like yeah. yeah, that always felt like a bigger celebration than Christmas. Yeah. I think for us, it's because like, we don't really, like Vietnamese people don't really celebrate like holidays or birthdays. Like nobody really celebrates mm-hmm. their birthdays. Um, and we just consider like Lunar New Year as like everyone's birthday. Oh. It's like a huge deal. Cause it's like, yeah. it's the birth of like a new year but it's also like everyone's, you know, like yeah. birthday. So what's your opinion on moon cake? <laughs> My opinion on moon cake? I, I like it. <laughs> yeah. It's really, really dense. Like yes. one moon cake is like, I mean, it's a whole meal, basically. I know. It's I think so it's like dense. Yeah. 10 eggs or something that goes yeah. into it. Yeah. What do you um, think about mooncake? <laughs> I have never liked it. So I think, but now that you say oh. that, I think the reason is because it's so dense. And I just feel yeah. like all of, like, what is it? All of this flavor, it's crumbling. Yeah. And it's like so dry. I don't know. But like, it's always a big deal. Like you bring, you bring mooncake to like, you know, festivities. And it's always like, ooh, mooncake. But like, yeah, I've never, never really liked it. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I feel like I don't, I have never met someone who doesn't like it. I know. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh. I think it's like, it's because like, is it made out of like red bean paste or I, something or yeah. like egg yolk? It's like that texture yeah. that I don't, I don't enjoy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So you don't like red bean paste either? I don't hate it in other things. Okay. Because like if oh, I, if okay. it's just like mochi, I'm fine. Oh yeah, so <laughs> yeah. No, I I can kind of get what you're saying. Like I've yeah. never been been able to eat a whole moon cake not in one sitting because it's just yeah. like, so yeah. much. Uh huh. Like I can have like a, a maybe like a quarter <laughs> at a uh-huh. time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But I think like it it also wouldn't be like 
Like, if I think of, like, a dessert that I would really spontaneously want, mooncake would never be, like, up there. Yeah. It's just, like, something I would eat for a holiday. Yeah, <laughs> And, yeah. like, enjoy it. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, moving on to my next question. Does Tom play video games? And if so, which ones? So, I don't think she would because her mom would not let her. Mm. Like, she has too many things yeah. <laughs> on her plate. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think she has the time. Yeah. <laughs> Her life is like a video game. So, like, yeah. would she? <laughs> <Go on>. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I don't think, like, for me personally, I don't think I have, like, that brain gene or whatever that, like, makes you addicted. Or, like, I have never, like, wanted to play a video game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, like, yeah. I've tried because, like, other people will tell me, like, oh, try out this video game, blah, blah, blah. And I, like, I do try. And I'm just like, what is the point of this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unless it's, like, for, okay, like, the only game I can play is, like, if it has, like, a practical value, like, like, I like the Oculus because I'm moving, so I consider it exercise, oh. but, like, if I'm just, like, sitting down, like, playing a video game, I'm just, like, I could be reading, I could be <laughs> doing so many other things. <laughs> They're not for everyone. Yeah, I think, yeah. like, yeah, when I, I mean, when I was a kid, like, my parents, like, pretty much, like, tried to like get us away from games mm -hmm. like we didn't have any games until i think i was in like middle school and then they finally like gave in because we were like begging and they got us like a nintendo ds and then they got us a wii mm -hmm. um so like I, I would play i wasn't like a huge gamer but like i would play games here and there mm -hmm. but i think like most of my attention was still on like reading and yeah. like i am not like like a huge gamer anymore like mm -hmm. my sister is like really into gaming mm -hmm. like hardcore gaming uh, but I think, yeah, I think, like, kind of what you were saying, I don't have, like, the personality to be, like, addicted to something for that long because, yeah. like, I will get bored of it. Like, yeah. <laughs> I got bored of Animal Crossing really quickly. <laughs> I, <Yeah>. like, <laughs> yeah. I, I can see the point of games. Like, I'll play quest games, uh -huh. but then, like, I don't have an urge to, like, play them to again. Get... And I, I have people, I know people who will, like, play them again, like, delete their file and start over. And I'm, like, that's but too you much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you know, people probably think the same about like us when it comes yeah. to reading. So it's just another like it's just a hobby, yeah. but you know. So, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. like what I like about reading is that like, like you 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 flip the pages and there's like no oh you know what I don't really like the stress of some video games. There's no yeah. stress to reading mm -hmm. unless you're stressed out for the character. Yeah, yeah. But like you know you're gonna finish the book right like <laughs> but you don't know if you're gonna live or die in this video game yeah, and that's what like, stresses me out yeah and like you could never beat it like you could never right. find out and yeah that that is stressful that's so terrible <laughs> yeah <laughs> and like you put all these hours into it <laughs> yeah yeah i think it's like the lack of roi like mm -hmm. if i put yeah. x an amount of hours into a book i know i'll finish it uh -huh. unless i like really hate it and i like dnf it <laughs> But um, you don't know if you're gonna, what if you don't like be yeah. the final boss and finish the game? Yeah. What if it, then you're just a failure? Exactly. Or you just have to keep trying and trying and then it's like, <laughs> where did your life go? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's the return on investment. Like, yes, I don't... that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I have one more question. Um, so if Tom could live a totally ordinary life, no like mythology involved at all, mm -hmm. do you think she'd be a TikTok star? <laughs> <laughs> or just good at social media in general? I think she would do social media, but like I mm. think the TikTok thing is like, unless it's about unless she finds like a topic that like she can yeah. film. Like I think she's too she would be too shy to like be in front of the camera. Like I don't know how oh. you do it, Katie, but I'm like every time I like try to record myself, oh. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no it's just practice like yeah. I use like I, I remember like even like at the beginning of like my career as an author mm -hmm. I was like so shy in front of like mm -hmm. audiences and cameras but then like when you do enough like in person or virtual events yeah. and if you also like try to do TikTok like <laughs> eventually you just like don't think about it <laughs> yeah yeah it's yeah. just like second nature yeah 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 but that's great. Like uh, you, some of your videos, like, I mean, your videos are all like very oh. entertaining. And like, I'm just like, I can't, I wouldn't be able to do it. No, yeah. I'm sure you can. Yeah. <laughs> I'll cheer you on, like and no. comment every video. <laughs> <laughs>
but I did download TikTok and I spent a large amount of time on it and then I was like no more (laughs) I have like things I need to do yeah and then you just like keep going and going and like things are hilarious and like you can waste the whole like you can waste days on TikTok yeah we're not addicted to video games, so we can get addicted to TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I I was I I used to always pride myself on like I just don't have like an addictive nature. But then like <laughs> give me chocolate or like French fries or like potato chips and it's like okay, I take I take, I take like, everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think like that's the end of my questions, but if anyone else like if the audience has questions I think we should probably do Q and A. Yeah, it's yeah. eight forty-five or five forty-five your time. Yeah, Katie, we do have one question. If you click on "Ask a Question" oh. toward the bottom. Oh, okay. I see. Okay, I'll read the question. Um, it's from Kylie. Question for both: How do you mentally switch gears from writing middle grade to writing young adult or adult? Ooh, that's a good question. Yeah. Do you want to go first or? If you want me to go first. <laughs> yeah. I don't I, mind. <laughs> no, yeah, you can go first. I'm going to think about this. <laughs> okay, sure. Um, it's, I think for me, it's just like a matter of like consuming the content that I want to write. Like if I say like, I like, it's like say I'm on deadline for like the, the sequel to my middle grade, which I was recently, um, then I'll be like, okay, it's time to get to work. I need to get myself into like a middle grade mindset. So to do that, I'm going to read a lot of middle grade. I'm going to like, you know, watch like really wholesome middle grade movies. So I think like uh, when I wanted to get myself into the mindset to write uh, the sequel to my middle grade, I just like I read like Amari and the Night Brothers. Uh, Mm -hmm. I think I reread Tristan Strong. Uh, I read uh, The Last Fallen Star. I think there were like a few other titles, like just like books that I had like lying around. I just like Mm -hmm. read for them. Um, and like, same for like writing young adult or adult, I'll just like read one or two books in that age category. And then before I know it, like my mind is already like in that mindset and I'm, I already have that voice and then, then I'll just go for it. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great one. That's a great answer. Um, are you like one of those people who can read whatever, like, like some people can't read in like the genre or age group that they're writing? but you you don't have problems with that right like no i don't <laughs> yeah yeah because I, I i don't either and i have never understood yeah. that like that criteria um yeah so it's interesting. Oh, the only thing i can't do is like if i have a, a book like recently released so like last gamer scamming was the last one to come out mm-hmm. um and like i couldn't read middle grade for like my release <laughs> week or like after that because i will compare yeah and yeah. i'll be like oh, this person is really good at middle grade. I suck and I'm very sorry that I released this to the public just now. Like, nobody look at me. Like, I apologize for everything I've ever written. Yes, just like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, like, there's, like, a book. So, I think Waka is here. So, Waka T. Brown, she has a book um, yeah. and it's called While I Was Away. It's, it's so a, good. It is so, so good. good. So like, it's a middle grade memoir, which like, I have never read like a middle grade memoir. I didn't even know like those really existed. <laughs> Sorry, Waka. But like, I read it and I was just like, oh, this was like the best like middle grade voice. And after I read her book, I was like devastated because it was like, I can never write like this. Like, how dare you, Waka? <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> yeah, like, why? Why? Like, so why are you for the me? rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then her her upcoming book dream annie dream um is just like just as amazing and like i was just i i was just so in love with it and like so excited for her um upcoming book so yeah like every time like now like not that i know your tip like now every time i like need to get into the voice of middle grade i'm like gonna pick up you know yeah. like a middle grade book or something yeah but do it. i'm yeah. not as like disciplined as you because i let my emotions <laughs> like decide what i'm gonna write next so like if i feel like writing a middle like a middle grade book that's what I'm going to write. And like, if I like have this like urge to write an adult fantasy, like that's what I'm going to write. But like, if I have to, I can never like force myself (laughs) to, you know, like, but if I like read, if I like picked up a middle grade book, then maybe I'll be like inspired to like dive into that voice again. Yeah. 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 No, that's what I do. Cause like, (laughs) like now that like I have deadlines, like, yeah, I don't feel like writing middle grade all the time, but if I have a looming deadline, I'll be like, well, I'll just have to do it. Yeah. And then if I read enough middle grade, then I'll be like, actually, yeah, I kind of am in the mood now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's awesome. 
All right. So we have another question from Trisha. Van, was there anything that surprised you while writing this book? Um, yes, there were a lot of themes. So like when you're writing like books, you never are like, I'm going to write a theme about good versus evil. And then like, you know, and then you write it. It's just like you just you like at least for me, like I start out with a character and I just like kind of let them do their thing. And like I am an outliner and but like not very thoroughly. I sort of just like have like a basic, you know, structure and then like kind of just let the story like run free and then, mm -hmm. but like once you like revise and edit, like themes of the book start to emerge and like, especially for Jade War, the theme of good versus evil. And then mm -hmm. the theme of like, uh, like internal and external like racism, like that's such a strong word, but oh, like, you know, yeah. the first book was very much about like her learning to like accept herself and her culture and like about like internalized racism. And, you know, those things are things that like, I never, like I didn't set out to write a book like this, but they sort of just like emerged, like either because like I was basing these stories on like the trauma I was going through or something, yeah. um, or like, this is just the type of story that, you know, comes out when you write about a character like this. So yeah, just, you know, like, like deeper meanings of the story, like really always surprise me, even though like I don't set out to write something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's just, there's just something about middle grade that like kind of forces you to write from the heart, mm -hmm. even if you're like not like aware of it or not aware of it, but like you don't like, as you said, you don't set out to be like, I'm going to write about internal versus external yeah. racism. <laughs> like <laughs> you don't do that. Yeah. But like if you're close enough to the story, mm -hmm. um, then like themes like that, like, Thing, your things that come from your own experiences or like you know what you've seen and heard like they're bound to just like come out on mm -hmm. the page yeah, yeah that's exactly. what I like about writing yeah yeah all right and then our next question is from Alex question for both how do you come up with your main characters um I can go first yeah uh, okay yeah, for me, I think like, I, I don't know if it's like that I necessarily just like come up with them on the spot. Like I'm not one of those like super disciplined outline writers. Um, I, um, I kind of feel like the characters will speak to me. That sounds weird, but like throughout the story, they will make themselves known to me. Mm -hmm. um, like I'll just like learn about their quirks. I'll like learn things about their background and their personality. Um, I'll know very basic things about how I want them to act and like who I want them to be at the start of the book and the end of the book. But mm -hmm. like the in-between, um, I just kind of like let myself discover as I draft. So I'm like kind of a discovery writer in that way. Um, but I think like I do usually at least think about like the most important qualities in my main character. Um, for example, middle grade, like I try to make my main characters like kind of like witty uh I try to make them you know very brave <laughs> unlike me um <laughs> and like they're usually kind of sassy because <laughs> I just think that's funny yeah <laughs> those are the kind of characters I enjoy reading about yeah. so yeah I just kind of like make characters um who are almost like you know they they have qualities that I wish I had at that age yeah um or that maybe I did have a little bit but like I I make them like just like you know more like stronger qualities in like this character and make them come out more mm -hmm. um yeah yeah um that's that's really in-depth like i always i think i have this complex where like i try not to create a character that's similar to me and then i have to be careful about like making them so different that i can't even write them you know yeah. um but what i do is like i'll create like what's called a voice journal and this isn't like my oh. original idea i think it was like um, a different author had like you know come up with this where you kind of write like a diary for that character or um like if it becomes so like another thing i have is that like i don't i like i'm afraid to talk so much about myself and become like so like self you know absorbed so like i feel like that translates into my characters like i i don't want to write a character who's like sitting around like diarying you know about like their <laughs> feelings and you know like i don't like i don't find that sort of character like so in, like engaging i guess so like what i'll do is like i'll pretend that they're like writing to like their best friend or something, you know, and that always like brings out a voice because like you talk to your best friend differently than how you would talk to like a norm, like not a normal person, but like, like a stranger or your teacher, you know, and like, I'll just like pretend that they're like writing letters to their best friend. And then like, I feel like um, 
characters really come to life like when you have them talk to someone. So then like once they start like dialoguing, um, that's when they like start to, I guess like, yeah, like start to show more of themselves, like how they respond to other people or like how they, yeah, see, yeah it's just like, that's when they really come to life. Yeah, no, yeah. I totally agree. And that's why like, I, I will never have a fully fleshed main character mm -hmm. at, like before I've written any words because yeah. That I will learn about that character mm -hmm. through their interactions with the other characters in the story, and like they just like come alive that way. Like mm -hmm. I I don't have it in me to like just create like a fully fleshed main character from the start. Yeah. Like they always like make themselves known to me throughout the yeah, plot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like people don't exist in vacuums, you know. So you like yeah. you gotta let them interact with other people because that's yeah, like, that's who exactly. you, like that's who you are too. Like as a person, like you don't exist by yourself. So. Yeah. yeah yeah like and also like different characters like bring out different traits of like yeah. your character just like how in real life like you know i'm different with like one friend versus another friend yeah like, people exactly. are very nuanced yeah 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 i totally agree yeah um i think that's the last question yeah. if anyone else has any those were some or, really fun yeah questions. they were really good I also think we're like very close to the end, right? Yeah, I know. It's like perfect timing. Hour. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for doing this, Katie. Like when I asked you, I was like, no, she's gonna say no. And then I was what? like so like what? excited that you said yes. No, no like I, I don't know. I was so like, excited. <laughs> I was so excited and honored. <laughs> Thank oh. you both for such a wonderful conversation um that was a lot of fun and everyone at home thank you so much for joining us and if you didn't already you can get your copy of girl giant and jade war at the link below at the green button and just a reminder to shop local for the holidays as best you can and to keep supporting independent bookstores super important always but especially now so thank you all so much and thank you katie and van van disappeared oh. um she's still here which close your camera. Um, but thank you both so much for joining us tonight. And um, congrats, Van. And I'm glad that you get to have a launch this time. <laughs> thank you so much for thank hosting. You. I don't know if you can hear me, but thank you. <laughs> yeah, we can, we can hear you. <laughs> okay, yeah. Thank you so much. This was so fun. Thank you both. Yeah, thank of course. You. Enjoy the rest of your launch week. Yeah, thank you. Yes, congrats. <laughs> Everyone have a wonderful rest of your night. All right, good night. Good night. Good night.